Mbappe doesn't want to be there, but they're both going to be there, Jules. Yeah, which is a, a crazy <laughs> situation, really, when you think about it. And one, and the one that they want to play is not the one who's going to play it, because ideally, <laughs> in the best of world, Mbappe will be the one they can rely on and build the team around for the season to come with Luis Enrique. But I think if he doesn't move, they would be they would do something with him, either bench him all season or most of the game, something. But Neymar would be there and Luis Enrique would be like, OK, if you're here, then may as well use you. But it would be rather Kylian to be used and not Neymar. It's, this is a, an unbelievable situation. Mm -hmm. And what have they done with all the Kylian Mbappe kits from the shop? Because the club shop isn't selling them anymore, Jules. Yeah, that's, that's the rumours. To be fair, I, I wanted to check before if you could still buy them online. I, I wanted to send one of my cousins or one of my sisters to go and try to buy one. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I didn't. And then so... like, we've got better things to do with our lives, Jules. <laughs> Bringing us from <laughs> Australia to send that's us the VST true. club shop. <laughs> it would be a good experiment, though, to go. It's not too far from the house. Uh, but, yeah, I find, it, I find it strange, but it might be, might be well possible. We know... We know the the, uh, the poker game between the club and Mbappe and the Mbappe clan. We know that in terms of power, trying to unsell everybody. Again, I think PSG in the last 48 hours have tried to say to Kylian, listen, why don't you extend and we put a clause in that extension that says that in the summer 2024, we give you a guarantee sell, selling clause with, a, with a, a certified amount of money. So for that amount, you go whatever club, just release that money and, and leave the trigger, trigger the close, for example. And he said no again to that. That's the second time that they tried to put that in a new contract. And he said no. So this is still the kind of power struggle between him and the club. And that's another step towards trying to unsettle him, trying to make him, to force him to, to accept some sort of new contract. But again, it's, it's, the thing that amazes me is that it's almost like if the club doesn't know him, this is who he's so stubborn. Now he's decided that he's not going to extend the contract mm. at all. He's not going to change. We know him. We know him. Me and Frank know him so well. He's not going to do anything now. So I think the club should accept that this is the situation. Nothing will change now. He's not going to accept anything, not even for the whole money in the world, and just try to find another solution. To be, you've got to give PSG credit for trying. No, no, you've got to give him credit because every manager that walks in, they're giving them the full PSG experience. Very much so, yeah. Well, Luis Enrique said they probably sat and went, well, I wonder if I'm going to get the full PSG experience. Yep. He's found out Most very definitely. quickly. So, in all fairness to them, they're giving them that experience. Now, we've already seen one former Spanish manager basically walk from a Premier League club today and Julian Lopetegui from Wolves. At this rate, we could see another one, Yeah, I'm, you know, sort of tongue-in-cheek, but you could imagine what's going through yeah. his mind. He's got all these things he's trying to improve. And, I, I mean, surely to God, before the transfer window ends, that some sort of agreement with, no. with Real Madrid has to be reached and this whole saga <laughs> is just put to bed and everyone can move on, no? We blame uh, Mbappe's stubborn French ways, Frank. Well, he's really French, I guess, you know. <laughs> we all still born. <laughs> and we, we really all know what we want. You know what I want to say about I, I was following a, um, um, an interview from Arsene Wenger, what he was saying, you know, at the time, you know, you had the chance to even give order to players. Now, nowadays, for those players who are millionaires, some, some of them even billionaires, you can't even give order. You, you can negotiate, but you cannot command anybody. They are, we are in a different business. The players are deciding for, for, their, for what they want to do and deciding even if they are under contract, they, nowadays, they decide, Neymar, four years contract, I want to go. And, uh, Mbappé, one year contract, I want to go. Uh, some players, you know, you want, you want it to go at the time where, where, you know, you had no chance to play. Most of the time it was like that. Nowadays is, well, I don't care, I have contract, but I want to go. That's absolutely crazy. We live in another world. And uh, I, I would join Mr. Wenger when he said that you cannot say anything to the players anymore because the... They are a company. They, are, uh, they really are a company. They're not any more players. In the old days, it was the manager that used to shout your name at the training ground. Yeah, yeah. Bolle, get out of here! <laughs> now it's the other way. It's like, Enrique, get out of here! <laughs> get out of here! Get out of here! Um, anything you'd like to add, Shaka? Um, I, well, a couple of things. I, I, I don't see 
Kylian Mbappe is doing anything wrong here at, at all, in, in all honesty. PSG painted themselves into this corner 18 months ago when they decided to make him, where they turned down the 200 million euro offer from Real Madrid and sold him on this project, but only put him on a two-year contract. And now he, he's doing what's well within his rights. I like how, how Jules framed this as, as, as a power struggle between PSG and Kylian Mbappe. It's not a power struggle at all. Mbappe has all the power. And he's just, he's just saying to PSG, he's not giving any back. And he's right if he wants to see out his contract, to see it out. Uh, again, this is not about a player who is under contract forcing a move. This is about a player who's saying, I'm happy to see out my contract and I'll move at, at the end of it, which I, I think is, is every player's right. I, I, I don't see Kylian Mbappe as, as doing anything wrong. This is just PSG letting their ego get in the way and when that 200 million euro offer came in and, and, and are now paying that 200 million euro price. Uh, one last thing on PSG, Gonzalo Ramos yep, but is heading there, isn't he, Jules? Are you excited? Yeah, it's been officially announced. Uh, we knew they were looking for a number nine. They had a few names, of course, on the, on the short list, like Harry Kane and Randal Colomwani. In the end, they chose Gonzalo Ramos. Some people are still telling me that maybe Colomwani can also come on top of Ramos. I find I'm a bit more skeptical about that, but we saw how the potential and how good he could be at the World Cup when he scored a hat-trick against Switzerland. We saw him with Benfica being really, really good. He's a young player. I think he might need a bit of time just to adapt and to, to still develop. But Luis Enrique can do something very interesting with him. And he's going to be the number nine that they've been missing really since the departure of Edinson Cavani uh, a few years ago now. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's really interesting. But, but I think there's still a long way to go before building a really strong team. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.